Hey guys, Jordan here from Hanson Axe. I'm going to show you how to fix um, any Red Ring of Death or E74 errors. It won't fix everything, some errors are just too overdone. So what you're going to need is a drill, some cleaning products to get rid of the thermal paste. As you can see here, a toothpick. Um, I'm using orange powder, it gets rid of stuff really well. Um, just some tools, a flathead screwdriver um, and some stuff. Just open the case, T8 Torx, T10 Torx. Um, hot glue gun and a soldering iron. I'm using a 40 watt. 40 watt is the best um, wattage to use and only costs $10 for that soldering iron. Um, some solder, wire strippers, tip cleaner and some wire. Uh, this is a two pin connector. This is to connect the, to basically make a new cable for your fan. Um, here's a kit that you'll get off eBay. Look in the description or annotation on the screen now and some thermal paste. So that basically comes with washers and bolts. I'll, sh I'll show you how to do that later. Anyway, you want to start off by removing the disk drive. Um, unattach the SARA and the power at the back. This is assuming you've already opened your Xbox and removed the silver screws. Then you want to take out the fan shroud and disconnect the 4 pin connector for the fan. And in this video, we're actually going to show you how to upsize it from a 5 volt or whatever it is to a um, 12 volt fan. Which will keep it cool, obviously. This one was a bit trickier than usual, a bit stiff. Eventually got it. Um, now you want to remove all the black screws. And again, that's assuming that you've removed the uh, silver screws. Uh, just with a T8, uh, T8 torque security. I really need to get um, a drill bit for this just to make it quicker, but I can just fast forward for now, so that's alright. <coughs> actually use two, I, I use one to loosen it and one to take them out because one of them doesn't take, uh, you can't really loosen them very well with this one here because the handle is real small on it and it, it'll break. Now you want to take out the RF module with the white plate on the front. Just got some clips on it. Um, removing the T8 Torx security bits. I'm pretty sure it is security. Yeah, it is security. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to get them. Actually, it might not be security because I just used a non-security screw. Sorry, guys. But anyway, I've removed the RF module. And now you'll be able to take out the motherboard. Once you've taken out the motherboard, just take off these um, thermal pads that connect the RAM to the metal casing to cool it down. Now I'm going to remove the X clamps just by doing it this way. This is the best way I found. The flathead screwdriver, screwdriver that just fits in there. Um, you can use needle nose pliers, but this is the best way I found. And it's the same deal with the CPU. Now you can just remove the GPU or the CPU, whatever you're doing. There you have it. See all that um, thermal paste is all worn out, so you're going to be replacing it. So now we're going to be um, getting our toothpick. Then we're going to be scraping all the thick stuff off. Then we'll get rid of that thin stuff on the top later. But you just don't want to soak it in um, gunk remover because all the chemicals sink down into the um, fiberglass. And if any, if you in the future if you ever want to replace the um, GPU um, by uh, like desoldering it and putting new leaded solder balls on it, then it'll, it'll have a hard time and it might bubble up. Then, uh, as you can see there, I've cleaned all this stuff off and cleaned the heat sinks using some orange power. It's it's really good. It sounds real shitty, but it's pretty good. Uh, get a drill, cut some holes, drill some holes, sorry, just big enough to fit the screws in, and put some tape here just to stop the short circuiting. I didn't do the holes very well because I had a smaller bit, so I had to keep drilling and drilling so I get it down, uh, get it bigger 
Anyway, I'm going to start off by taking the um, studs off now. Just with a um, shifter. I actually had trouble getting the one in the right hand corner off. Um, the thread on it was um, broken. Because um, I think I wasn't doing it right at first. Like the wrong way, whatever, I don't know. But anyway, you want to get some wire and thread it through that hole that you can see there. I don't know if yours has that, but just put it on the side if it doesn't. And just leave it there for now. I'll show you the pin out for that later. So this is basically the 12 volt um, wire attachment to change it from 5 volt to 12 volt. And you want a hole there so the wire can go through and reach the other side where the fan is. Now I've connected it all up now with some hot glue. Make it really flat, make sure you go in between all the circuits and capacitors and resistors. This is the best setup I found, just so you don't get in the road of the fan. To stop any, um, uh, so there's more, um, heat, uh, heat going out. You don't want to basically plug up the um, the shroud, otherwise no heat's going to come out. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to get that in the road of the fan. Uh, anyways, you want to attach a, um, a piece of wire to the ground, as you can see here. It doesn't have to be here. It could be on um, any ground you can find. If you don't know what ground is, um, basically it's the opposite to positive. Just, just make sure you've got a positive. And then you've got a wire connected to like a metal casing or just, just do what I'm doing here. Most of you do know that though, obviously, but some people don't. So you've got the 12 volt positive and then you've got the negative. And then we're going to attach that to the two pin. But first we have to get the fan um, pins. Sorry, the fan wires and connect them to the two pin connector. <coughs> so just cut it off there, doesn't really matter. I ended up extending um, the wires here so I can fit it to where I put the connector. But basically, we're making our own connector, so if we want to remove the fan again, we can. So it's not a permanent connection. So the brown and the red is the positive, um, and the blue and the black is the negative. And it is different for other Xboxes, but you will have to figure that out yourself. I actually don't have the um, a diagram for those. I have a diagram for this total pinout, but it depends what colour you have, so you're going to have to figure out negative and positive on your fan. Um, anyway, I've connected the the pin, I guess the pins for the uh, two pin connector and the positive and the negative and then you want to um, attach it to the two pin once you've put I, I like putting um, a heat uh, shrink tube on everything I do just basically um, in case there's some wire sticking out of something and I could just quickly move it up and heat it and it'll um, stop any short circuiting but it's not necessary I guess so you just put it into the two pin connector you don't have to use a two pin connector you can just hook it straight up to the positive and negative it's up to you it's really good for the And you can just move up the shrink tube wherever needed.
and attach the positive and the negative to the opposite ends corresponding to the fans wires I guess and there's a pin out for the um, positive just on that 12 volt pin there it's pretty easy you can pause it back there if you want to it's up to you but we've got this connected and extended as well and that's this is what it looks like so far well, that's the end of the connector okay now we're going to test out the fan make sure it's 12 volt it will be a little bit louder but it's worth it in the end doesn't really worry me if I've got my surround sound turned up real high See the fan is working it turned off because I got overheated so you can put um, metal washers on the rams if you want to just to get rid of some of the heat but don't put them on the ones where the GPU is. I found out that if the GPU heats up enough, the hot glue is going to melt and stick to it. So don't do that. Just put it on two of the RAMs that are not under the GPU. Anyway, here's the bolt setup. So you have a metal and then a plastic washer. This is from your Red Ring of Death kit off eBay or Amazon, wherever you get it from. So just make sure it's set out like that. And then just start putting them in now. Just make sure all the plastic is touching the board. No metal touches the board. Now you want to tape over this, um, the bolts. So I was tired when I was making this video, and I, well I am now, I was tired when I was um, editing this and I wasn't really concentrating and I actually forgot to fast forward this part when I was just trying to get the tape out, sorry guys, but um, just have to wait a second. Okay, here we go. So just tape down those so when you turn it over it doesn't fall, the bolts don't fall out. This isn't the best tape to use because it leaves um, a bit of residue there, but the best tape to use is um, painter's tape, the blue tape. Okay, now you want to start off with a plastic and then a metal. You want to put a plastic on the board and then a metal over that one. So start off with the plastic and then the metal. So the metal's touching the heat sink. And then do the same with all of them. Actually, do it with the GPU only. I accidentally did all of them, but that's for demonstration, I guess. Actually, no, I didn't. Sorry, j just do one um, processor. Just do GPU or whatever, which one, everyone you start off with. Make sure you don't put all the washers on all of them. Okay, now you want to get your thermal paste and spread it on the GPU. This doesn't have to be flat on the top, just make sure it's spread evenly. You don't need a card for it as long as um, like there's not a big clog in the middle. Uh, sorry, in the one corner and there's none in the other corner. Or you can just put a blob in the middle and when you push the GPU down it'll spread it um, automatically. And same with that little chip. Okay, now you want to put, uh, pick up the GPU heatsink and place it onto the screws. Keep pressure on it so the washers don't come off. And get your screwdriver and you'll have to poke it through the tape. Make sure you don't put the tape on too, too well or don't use um, really good tape otherwise you're going to have a hard time trying to stick it through the tape and turn it. So do it like a, say if you're putting a wheel on a car, people say that. Um, uh, tighten them evenly, I guess. 